So my challenge story number one was really one of the biggest, the first biggest challenges I actually encountered as a person that I can remember. Uh, it's being shot. So I was shot. I graduated high school, getting ready to go to college. And you know, it was a regular day. My friends and I, we go to the store, you know, we hang out and have fun and that's what we call it. Well, on this particular day, I went into the store and then when I came out of the store, there was a gentleman that was by the car. Well, my, my friend's name is Rob. He was the driver. My name is Rob and we got robbed. And it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. Right, so I get out, the st I come out of the store, I see this gentleman standing by the car, I think it's one of the people from the neighborhood. It's not. It's a guy who has a gun and he wants to take all of our money. We wore a lot of rings on our fingers back then. So he wants to take everything. So long story shorter, he actually saw me, he said, get in the car, put the gun to my head. So now he, the shooter's in the passenger seat, my, my friend Rob's in the driver's seat, and I'm right in the middle, whatever you want to call that seat. And I'm really just feeling like this is the end of life. Um, and before I know it, my friend Rob was really uh, excited at the time. He gives me this look like we should try and take the gunman. So I look away. Before I know it, my friend Rob grabs the gun from the gunman. Okay, he tries to grab the gun. And the guy pulls back. And when he pulls back, all right, all right, rewind. First, Rob hits him in the head with a bottle. Okay, the bottle bounces off the shooter's head. All right, it bounces all over the car. The shooter obviously has the best handle grip, so he pulls out, steps outside of the car, aims in and shoots three shots. Three shots. And one went in my friend's leg, one went in my arm, and it went actually through my shirt, because later on that day, I was holding my bloody Barry Sanders jersey up and I had holes in the front of my shirt. And I was wondering, like, because I only got shot in the arm, the holes in my arm right now. But there was holes in my shirt. And I wonder why there was holes in my shirt. But kind of find out when we both jumped back from the shooter, the bullet went through my arm, traveled through my shirt, just missing my chest cavity by those mathematical equations, whatever you call that, and then went into his leg. So the challenge was for me was really being, was trusting people. And my trust in people in my environment was really challenging. It, it affected me, but then I realized it also heightened my awareness because from that moment on, I became way more aware. I was way more conscious. I was definitely more mindful of everything that I was doing, who I was surrounding myself with and the environments that I put myself in. So I wouldn't take that back. I'm glad I dodged a bullet and we were the matrix before the matrix. <laughs>So my challenge story number two, uh, I call my championship fight with pain meds. And so it was 10 years. A doctor diagnosed me with uh, degenerative bone disease. And he said, your body is 30 years older than you. And these are the drugs you're going to have to take. So I was taking all these different pain medications. And what pain medications do is it alters your state of being. Um, they, it does soothe in one area, but it causes defects in the other. And so it was challenging my temperament. Uh, it also makes you want more of the same. So I was taking more pain meds than I really needed to take because my body was becoming dependent upon it. Again, I was starting to fall into this funk. Until one day, you know, I realized that if I didn't make a change, if I didn't make an adjustment, that my life was going to be cut short and God's plan for my life is, is, is long. And so if I'm going to match up to what God's plan is for me, I better start having some free will and do the things I need to do today. And so I realized I needed to come off of it. So I began to wean off. I began to wean off. I was taking six or seven pills a day and I would go to five pills, then four and a half pills and then four and eventually down to nothing. And what that showed me, the, the challenge for me was being able to balance my pain and the discomfort and the things that I was going through, you know, without being dependent upon something. Because the moment you become dependent upon something, how you do one thing is how you do everything in a sort of a way. So I realized that. And so through exercise and through taking up boxing again, I got back in the ring and I had a fight after not fighting for 20 years. I challenged myself. And what that did was it allowed me to not only become a better person, but a better husband, a better father, 
and just a better giver in this world. And so I'm thankful for that championship prize fight against pain meds. I was a pharmaceutical slave, but now I'm free. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. <laughs>So COVID, there were pros and there were cons. Um, and I'll talk about the cons first. There was a, a huge challenge um, that my entire family went through during this time. Um, first, you know, there was a change in revenue coming into the house because of some of the changes that happened with COVID. And so we didn't have the money that we needed to really sustain our family. So we had to try and make things happen. And at the same time, we were renting our home at the time and our landlords decided because of the scenario, they wanted to do some different things. So in a blink, we had COVID, we had no home, we had a lack of revenue. And so that was the first time our family really experienced something of that nature. And so what we did, uh, we wound up staying with a family friend. We went from having a four bedroom home to uh, four in one room, there was five of us. Uh, RJ had his own room and what what that did though was that really helped to give everyone a great perspective about how much we love each other and how much we stick together no matter what because we got out of that we got a home we got our revenue coming back but in the depth of it in the storm in the middle it was us it was my children my wife and I and what we learned to do was we spent so much time together we had so much fun together and though it could have been just the worst time in the history of life, we found a way to come together as a family. And so it was the challenge of COVID and all the experiences that we went through that actually brought us together, that helped us to actually do some introspecting, you know, within ourselves, which even made us better as a collective. And so I'm thankful for the challenge. You know, they say no pain, no gain. And I think with that pain, if you can maintain, that's, that's where wisdom is gained. I think that's a wrap. I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna, yeah, no pain, no gain is where wisdom is gained. So the, so the pain actually creates the gain because you gain wisdom. Mm. That's hot. That's what we did. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off 
um, while you're here and when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
And it was probably the most devastating and the most enlightening and the greatest moment of my life. It was seven months of my life taken away from me. Seven months of incarceration where I couldn't see anyone that I wanted to see or do what I wanted to do. I was on a schedule that wasn't my own. But I learned something by being incarcerated. By being on the inside, it gave me more time to be on the inside of myself. And through that introspection, I realized at 20 years old, by looking at the guys around me that was in this facility who had all intentions on coming back, no intentions for making changes, I realized at that time that it was a decision that I was going to have to make and that I was going to have to be accountable for the decisions I was making. And I was going to have to be mindful about what those decisions were. And so in that moment, I realized that I was going to have to make some adjustments, change some friend groups, start to open my paradigm, change my perspective, start to read more books that are going to encourage me to think those kind of thoughts. And so without this situation, of course, I couldn't get a job for a while. I was on probation for a long time. You, know, you have this judgment that comes with the experience. But it was the experience of 1996 that allowed me today to be able to not only help other young people not go through the same thing, but at the same time be able to articulate why and how you can make different choices. You can be a hustler, but be a hustler that multiplies, multiplies in the positive in your favor. Be a hustler that multiplies in the favor of you. And so look at the people that are around you. Look at the influences, the external uh, uh, influences, people, situations, and ask yourself, is this who I want to be? Look at the future, because the future is what you do today. So do something today and that will impact your tomorrow. <laughs>it's a great day my name is shay brown i just want to speak to you the speaker or maybe not even a speaker right maybe you're not a speaker but you have a message inside of you that you want to release or maybe you have a story right a story of your life a story in your career or or maybe maybe as you're listening right now you're an expert right you're you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something you're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. You know, 
what, what I would tell my 21 year old self, number one is to relax, okay? Don't move so fast. But most importantly, patience and commitment will be the foundation of all the great things that will happen to you. Patience. Patience, when COVID hit, my company was not producing the kind of money that I needed for myself. It was enough money for the company, but not enough for me. So then I had to make some decisions. Should I leave the company? Should I give up my percentage of the company? But I was patient. And I was committed to doing the things that I needed to do every single day to help the company grow. I was patient. And because I was, now I'm in a position where the company we're looking at acquisition being acquired in less than two years. We're looking at multiple investors wanting to invest in this idea. And so what I would tell you is that patience is going to keep you there, right? And commitment is going to get you there. Patience and commitment. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Eat up. One tremendous guiding principle for my life is self-control. If I were able to instill this like an app into every person, especially my 21 year old self and anyone young. Self-control is what I would do. Um, there's been many situations that have had the ability to go sideways. A lot of relationships where bridges could have been burned, um, but self-control has allowed me to make decisions that allow those bridges to stay open. You know, I remember when I was, uh, my wife and I, this is some years back, maybe about 10 years ago, you know, one of the neighbors came and was banging on our door and it was kicking really loud and scared us. Come to find out he was upset that we parked in front of his house. And so next thing I know, I'm in the middle of the street with the guy. I'm really getting ready to lay him out. Um, because first of all, I was fearful of my fa for my family, right? And this gentleman just kind of rolling up onto us, loud and rambunctious. So here we are in the middle of the street, going back and forth and right before you know, I really postured myself to pretty much deal with this, meaning end it. You know, I looked over at my wife and she was like, Rob, just forget it. Because both of us were animated at the time. She was like, just forget it. Don't, don't worry about it. And when she said that, something fell over me. It was just, just that power pause, we call it. The stillness allowed me just to say, you know what? My bad, man. I'm not going to park in front of your house anymore. I'm sorry. I was wrong. This is like in a moment. So what happens next is the guy who wants to fight me says, man, I'm sorry. And the guy's dad's outside who was elevated too. And he's like, ah, oh, you know what? This is stupid. You're right. The whole thing, it was like some kind of uh, paradox of uh, <laughs> yin and yang all at once. And then next, you know, the cops were there and the streets were flooded with cops. And the cops came up and said, okay, Sir, you, you want to press charges? And I was like, no. We got any problems here? I was like, no, no problems here. So what's going on? Well, just a little altercation, disagreement. We communicated. And that was it. So my self-control allowed the situation to gain control, right? The Bible says you know, a, a man without self-control is like a city without walls. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what that means is that back in the days, if you didn't have walls up, anybody could come in and then you're just destroyed. So a man who doesn't have or a woman who does not have self-control, you don't have any walls, any barrier. Anything can come in and destroy you. It was the self-control that not only allowed us to be in a better situation, but those people, they were empowered and they were inspired because after that, our relationship had changed. And you could tell that it was positively fruitful. So self-control, that will be a major attribute. So when I was younger, I was on the ice with a bunch of friends. I were on a pond and it was solid until it wasn't. And I fell through. 
And I, rem I remember falling through the ice. And when I fell through the ice, when I came back up, it was solid. And I, I remember looking around and I could see everyone through the ice, but I didn't see a hole. I got real focused. I remember focusing myself. And when I opened my eyes, I was able to locate the hole and get myself to it and eventually pull myself up. Focus has been the reason. Focus has been the guider for me, not just in my relationships, but in business. And it is one of the strongest attributes of a human being. Focus has allowed me to actually learn certain skills and focus in on those different skills and attributes to where now those skills and attributes are utilities for me today. It's only the focus. See, focus is, dang it, shoot. Focus is like, without it, you're lost. You know, focus is like wandering around the desert like the children of Israel. And what could have taken 11 days takes you 40 years, right? So don't make an 11 day journey a 40 year journey. Focus, focus, focus. I wrote a book called Hocus Focus some years ago. And what made me write that book was that I started really realizing that if I could just concentrate my energy, if I could just laser focus on what I'm working on, not spend 25% of my energy, not spend 65% of my energy, but put all of me into whatever I'm doing, that it would manifest. That seed would sprout. And sometimes focus means you got to have the mindset of a bamboo tree. You got to know that a bamboo tree, when the seed is planted in the ground, it takes five years. In five years, the seed is underneath the ground. Five years. You have to cultivate that seed. You got to focus every day and cultivate your craft. Every single day, focus on what you need to do. In year five, it sprouts to the ground and it grows 90 feet in six weeks. It grows 90 feet in six weeks and it's one of the strongest trees in the world but it's underneath the surface where all the work was getting done. And it's the focus of the cultivator, of the planter, of the farmer that had to cultivate that seed. It was the focus on that seed that allowed it to grow. So focus on your seed and you will see its fruit. <laughs>
Investigate to see how you can automate. So hands down, so I've been a part of a lot of experiences, photo shoots, video shoots, video shoots, music video on stage. This today though, this has been to me uh, that I can remember the greatest production experience that I've actually had. And the reason for that is because the people around me right now, like they're so authentic and so genuine. The atmosphere that has been created will allows you to be yourself and relax. Uh, and there's, you can also feel, you know, we're the human beings, we have energy, we can feel it. Energy is transmittable. So you can feel when the energy is positive, moving in a, in a positive direction, you have good momentum. And so that makes you better on the inside. And I think when you're trying to portray or give a message or speak from your mind and articulate, it's all about how you feel. Because how you feel is how you think, how you think is how you speak. And so I'm thankful for everyone here today. And I'm thankful for this experience to be able to share you know, what I'm doing, what I've done, and maybe it can reach one, right? Maybe, maybe one. <laughs>